7 Eleven is now on the live servers, and even though we went through a whole one hour review on stream talking about you know the fucking meta and analyzing all these different lines and comps, there are still sometimes well times you're gonna have to cook certain boards and cook in certain ways. And one of the main things that will cause you to have to cook are portals. Some portals, especially things like loot subscription, can really alter the way that you have to play the game and you have to cook on the fly. So in today's video, I want to watch a little bit of somebody who had to cook, uh, who's also, by the way, an absolutely base player, none other than Rain Plosion. She is just consistently one of the best players in North America. It's J Cup winner and back in set seven. Uh, just consistently such an absolute beast and it is such a treat to watch this game with you guys today. Uh, you can't see it. The tracker is hiding her scores on the top left, but she is currently already in Masters. So she's actually, I believe, one of the first 10 maybe 15 or 20 in NA to already hit managers, so absolute fucking beast. But anyways, <clears throat> it's a little bit of a spoiler with the intro, but we are going into loot subscription. Uh, very fun portal in general. It's just one of those portals that's like, it's fun, but it can definitely be uh, a little bit uh, high variance. And I know a lot of pros don't particularly enjoy that. Uh, but yeah, anyways, Bard and Ophelios out of the orb already. So we are already thinking about Bard or Ophelios, like one of the two. Uh, Ginsu slamming generally generally is okay, but usually if you Ginsu slam, you are thinking about Bard and Ophelios reroll. Both of these are really S tier lines, so we're already given a pretty incredible start right off rip. Uh, holding on to the Kogma as well for potential snipers. Oh, I guess Warden as well. I mean, that's fine as well. We just need a little bit of front line. Um, we do have the Sivir too that we can make as well. We're probably not going to make it just yet because... We do want to hold on to the bar, do want to hold on to Philios here. Any bows, any swords, that can, definitely can lean us toward that general direction here. Uh, looks like we have to sell the jacks if we want to hold the sivir, which we do. And then we're given our two on augments here. You have my bow, three's company, and sleight of hand. So, out of these augments in particular, if you just look at the stats, you don't really think about anything else. Uh, sleight of hand, it's a 4.04. It's actually like one of the better gold augments. Somebody in chat had also asked, uh, is the music overlay supposed to be there for the tuber? Uh... I guess it's fine. Like who cares? Uh, it looks nice, by the way. Some people can know that, like you know, we're listening to like good music on the street. But anyways, um, sleight of hand, really solid augment. Just in general, is really great. Uh, but you have my bow three's company. They're also niche and great in their own respects, depending on your spots. Three's company is one of those augments that you can kind of take if you want to force a certain line. More specifically, uh, you're trying to force like fortune openers. So things like getting the Tristana or getting things like duelists or getting things like more bards, more Felioses. Uh, three's company, is, it's a pretty solid augment just because three cost reroll, a lot of really strong lines exist. So I don't even think it's that bad. Sure, it's a 4.6 in the stats, but I think in the right spots, um, you can definitely consider taking it. But you have my bow mixed the most sense out of all of these despite sleight of hand having the best stats because we are thinking about bard and failures already because we've been dropped them already at 2-1 so we can go see and i would probably re-roll uh middle first and then right side see what else is going on uh she re-rolls middle and right and then ends up with you have my bow so uh already thinking about uh bard or Aphelios, one of the two we do have neither of the openers exactly loose subscriptions we get an orn artifact no sniper's focus which kind of blows but diamond hands is still perfectly solid we still get a bunch of economy that we can generate and economy is good because three cost reroll is very hard to hit there's a lot of money that you to invest into rolling and trying to get to the spot where you can you know get the seven decently healthy roll find your units and three costs are expensive there's a lot no more chosens anymore so it, it, it takes a lot of money to get there so uh I'm liking this diamond hands pick a lot. And also, it gets the proc like basically every round, especially if we're loose streaking early. So we're already one loss, 10 gold. It's looking pretty solid. The spot's already looking really good. Um, it looks like we already did already give up on the bard as well. I believe somebody, I believe Spencer called bard in chat. So I think this is why uh, Rain was already like, okay, I'm just gonna play Felios then. Uh, and it's sort of like a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a solid strategy. Um, you might think that like calling comps in chat is cringe, but you'd be surprised. It's like, it's, it's surprisingly helpful. People can't scout every little thing, even at the highest level. Uh, they should, but sometimes maybe your direction is a little unclear, uh, even though it might seem clear to you. So typing what comp you think you're gonna be running, uh, especially if it's a reroll comp, can probably save you a lot of headache. Uh, looks like we are given the Orn Encounter. Oh yeah, I forgot Encounters are a thing. So I guess we're gonna be talking about that. Uh, Mana Zane, Anima Visage, and Mana Zane. I do like Sniper's Focus in general, uh, but Anima Visage does make a little, it does make quite a bit of sense. I think she was kind of stuck between the two. Um, I think Anima's Visage is fine. It's just a really solid frontline tank with Redemption and Anima. They work perfectly well together. Add Diamond Hands, your tank types are already looking solid. Plus, I don't think it's good to get... A, we probably want to get a lot of value out of the Sniper's Focus anyways. It's not like it actually helps kill an extra unit. Um, it's a little it's a little close, but... 
nonetheless, it looks like we're already in a pretty interesting high variance lobby with double ore artifacts by 2-3. Uh, losing here was very good loss and we are now at three loss with i believe 20 gold so range spots already looking really solid getting the rod as well for the ginsu is nothing else we really want and so far pretty solid and straightforward game nothing too you know nothing too crazy so far but get the rod as well saw the zoe making 30 super hot um i don't know how i particularly feel about seven ginsu's just yet um the sweatiest play would be to wait until the match pops up and then slam the Ginsu's after if you think that you will lose anyways. That way you can maybe try to kill an extra unit. But, uh, like, for example, like, this is a little dicey. Like, if, if I ran into this fight, um, I might not slam Ginsu's immediately. I feel like I, I, I feel like I would actually hold off on it uh, because I, I think it would be, like, way too close. Um, but it looks like, yeah, so it looks like we end up winning, so we're not going to go for a 5 loss. But maybe we just get a 2 win instead. Uh, we actually pump level here as well, so we get faded in as well. And suddenly our board is actually looking really solid. Um, things like the Cho'Gath 2 are decently nice, just because Behemoth in general is great whenever you're thinking about frontline for your faded line, just because Behemoth plays into Thresh, and Thresh is, like, the main tank of Behemoth's slash faded. Not of Behemoth, sorry, of faded. But, anyways, especially for Aphelios reroll, by the way, because we're, we're probably going to be looking for Thresh to be Aphelios 3, that is the main line. Um, there is different variations for it, but mainly it's Thresh 3 and Aphelios 3. Sometimes you have like 7 faded if you end up finding a spat. Sometimes you play, it's usually 5 though, at least if I can recall off, off memory correctly. But I believe the main line is 5 faded uh, with no spatula. So we're still, I mean, sitting pretty chilly, pretty solid. Uh, 2 win at the very end, 90 HP were very healthy after stage 2. Uh, saved a lot of HP, especially because of this Anima Visage pick. Really solid choice. Uh, and we were given IE. So... Oh, and a spat. So spat is actually pretty solid because spat is actually one of those things that like is really enables this comp because we can actually already start looking at faded spat. And Deathblade is easily one of Aphelios' best items. You might have noticed that she didn't opt for the IE. Uh, Deathblade is really great because Aphelios just really... Like, he does enough damage with the Cypress. He just needs a little bit of that extra just stat stick and then he'll just, you know, just clean everything. Um, also, just Aphelios in general, I believe, really likes Ginsu's Rudan's Deathblade. I think that's sort of the main... Uh, BIS that people tend to run, but it can also depend. It varies depending on what you find. Uh, but anyways, going to 3-2 here with Behemoth, Crown, Chinese Titan, and Harm Assist. Um, gonna be honest, Harm Assist sort of seems to be like the only decent one from this spot. Harm Assist is just, you can't really ever go bad with Harm Assist. Uh, it's especially nice because then you don't really have to feel this pressure to like find a Gunblade somewhere. Because especially... Uh, in this set, there's a decent amount of backline access. A lot of different splashes can actually end up hitting your backline. So having some level of healing somewhere is typically integral, and that's why you see a lot of people really advocating for a gunblade somewhere on your board, eventually, usually setting on something like a Huey. But Harvest seems to be the best here. Tiniest Titan, I, I don't even know what the stats on this thing is. It's uh, 4.58. That's actually not bad. 4.58 is not bad, but... Uh, it's definitely not ideal. We didn't take the strongest of combat augments either, so it, it, it's okay, but uh, we're 90 HP. Surely, like, our board is strong as well. We want to find something that'll boost the combat power of our board a bit. And Behemoth Crown is, I don't think this is any good. Yeah, it is a, wow, 4.9. So, an Emerald Plus. So, that is just definitely not it. So, I would probably reroll left in middle if I were her. Uh, but we will see what Rain ends up doing, because I don't actually remember what she does here. Um, both of these are just not that solid, though. To say the least. Uh, I think I, I do remember watching this and thinking like, wow, she took a long time here because I think she was really uh, conflicted. But surprisingly enough, she actually rerolls Harmesis and we're given Jewel Lotus, which is fine. Lotus is Lotus, but uh, in Aphelios, it's not that great. It's okay, but it's not that great. But uh, it, it's fine. You can still take it. It's, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, but I'll definitely reroll middle and left side to see what we get. We get Baboom and Sniper's Crown, and Baboom is like. It's only good in Kogma. It, it sounds like it would be good in something like Syndra, but I think people have realized that this arm is just kind of shit. Uh, let me just that's 4.8 at 4.2, so definitely not ideal. Um, and I believe only Kogma is the good user of Baboom. So it looks like Sniper's Crown is also a potential option. This does give us another Rage Blade, um, which is kind of interesting to say just because we already have one Ginsu, but um. It could be fine enough. Maybe we could cook a little something with this. And she actually ends up going with Cypress Crown. So that's actually really interesting. Uh, so she ends up um, not... She is level 6 though. Good. So we did end up pumping. But uh, we are double Ginsu's now with the Sniper's Crown. So it's a bit of an awkward choice here. I think if it were me personally, I think I'm definitely leaning towards Jewel Lotus. So I'm a little surprised to see that she ended up going with Sniper's Crown. But maybe she's thinking about like a 4 Sniper variation. Which is already pretty spicy. It's not something that you see very commonly. 
But looks like Cho'Gath, two, oh, I mean, it's easily two lesser dupes. Like, we're playing three cards we roll. Come on now. Um, there's nothing to really uh, dupe in particular right now, but uh, duping for an Aphelios 2 right now is actually super solid. It saves us a lot of HP. We actually found a decent amount of upgrades, so I think that was why she was rolling. She has just a bunch of different potential possibilities of hitting stuff. So definitely rolling, trying to maybe hit the Aphelios 2, and then we don't have to dupe it. But hitting the Aphelios 2 now, because we probably should have rolled last round, and that's why she was probably rolling this round, um, seems to be fine enough to me. So, I like this play a lot. I think the rolling was good. I think duping one, using one of them to dupe for the Aphelios is super solid. Uh, but so far, again, very pretty straightforward game so far. Uh, the Harvest, again, was... Or rather, sorry, the Cypress cut off the Lotus I thought was really interesting. But it already opens up some pretty interesting possibilities. Uh, definitely going to want to rod again because we do have the open spat. So, looking into the faded spat would be nice. But it looks like we are contested. And I think this is sort of the moment where I realized I was like, okay... This is a little interesting. So it seems that there's uh, one person already who has a Faded Crown spat slammed, and I believe Spencer, I don't remember if it's Spencer exactly who is the one that contests this, but I believe Spencer is the one who's also, he said Bard, and now he pivoted into a failure. So now we're playing contested. So now our spot is looking not nearly as good as it used to because playing three cost contested lines really fucking suck. So it's really interesting to see how rain navigated from the spot because i think this is sort of the point where i went okay interesting like we're contested not the best spot to be in but now what do we do and also spencer by the way yeah spencer is in fact contesting us he has the ie sniper's focus with the gamblers but holding on to nothing but faded units and he has epoch um or epic or epoch i'm not really sure how the fuck you pronounce it um i say epoch i'm not sure if anybody actually has like a like i don't, I don't even know what, what it's named after it just sounds like they put a bunch of vowels and consonants next to each other but uh, i guess we're He's, he's Epoch, whatever. But the, the problem is, is that with Epoch, Spencer has significantly more agency in trying to find these three costumes than us because he gets so many free rolls on 7, on 4-1. And that can make things a little bit dicey for us. So it's a little hard to say. Plus, he's also sitting on a dupe as well, the mini one, because of the encounter. So we have to be thinking to ourselves, okay, now what? What can we do? Um, there are usually two main methods when it comes to being contested. One of which is you just say, fuck it, hold hands. Uh, like an absolute DJ, by the way. And then you just say, you know what, I'm in. And then you just fucking run it down. Um, oh, by the way, Faded Emblem and a bow. So, oh, this is, I remember this as well. I thought this was interesting. But anyways, either you can contest hold hands, which a lot of people end up doing, or you can just say, fuck it, I'm gonna push level and use this board to tempo. And because Rain has so much HP, she can actually opt to tempo. And so we end up going for the Faded Spat here. We're four snipers, six Faded. Really interesting board on seven. We just play seven. It's a very, very solid board to be sitting on at level eight. And we send the Last Whisper on the Aphelios, which some people might look at that and think it's redundant. But actually, I think it's pretty much the correct play in the spot. I think Last Whisper in general is still really solid on Aphelios. Just because he has some level of innate Sunder doesn't mean that it's everything that you need. And Last Whisper, the stats are incredibly great on Aphelios. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, anyways, moving on forward to Heroic Grab Bag, Jewel Lotus, and Teaming Up. Um, Heroic Grab Bag is definitely a potential option here. We'd end up with three lesser dupes but it's uh, I, uh, like when your gold augment is two lesser nikos it, it feels kind of rough sometimes it, it's usually one of those augments you take as a bailout it's excuse me sorry i had some salmon pasta earlier today because um ah, tilapia but heroic <laughs> grab bag again it's 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 a cop out it, it it's you want to salvage your placement so you take it just so you can hit your three star three cost usually on four two and then you just call it there when you're contested it can also be pretty nice but when we have other options as well from a gold level augment, like typically hero grab bag is almost never the correct play. And usually getting a gold level combat is the way to go. Lotus or teaming up can definitely be one of the better options here. And because we're actually also sitting on a reforger on our bench, you can see on the far left side, teaming up actually doesn't sound that bad. In case we get a bad support item, we can always reforge it and try to hope for something else. Support items in general have been super solid the whole set. So I can definitely see teaming up being a potential option here as well. Support cash, teaming up. Uh, support cash teaming up is basically the same thing, but teaming up is like plus eight gold. Um, the only difference is that teaming up is random, but you do have the reforger, so it's not the worst in the world. So I can definitely see taking teaming up here for sure. But you can also reroll, uh, take support cash, but she ends up uh, opting for wow, teaming up hits the Aegis, uh, eight gold, and we're sitting on 40. So Rain is also, by the way, being very, very astute and not rolling at all. So we're sitting here 40 gold level. 
what was it? Level 8, 83 HP. Our, our spot's really solid. Somebody else just hit Shen 3. Somebody else hit, like, Alawi 3. People are starting to hit some pretty capped out boards. But this is actually one of the main ways people have been trying to fast 9 this set. Which is using utilizing 2 star 3 costs because the unit quality is just so high. Every A lot of units are really, really great. Just standalone by themselves. So using things like a 2 star of failures to get to 9. Skipping level 8 to, like, try to dig for those 4 costs. Um... Well, I just said that, but then there's this allow counter that gives you eight free rerolls, so it looks like we're gonna roll a little bit. But nonetheless, you get the idea, though. Uh, Rain definitely could have just like sat and like you know without this encounter, we just go, okay, you know what? We just sit, go fast nine, and then we'll work from there. But it looks like we're able to play Sniper Sinja, which is super fucking interesting, and a Gintsu's on her as well, which is obviously not one of her best items. But you can think of Gintsu's as a mana gen item and Sniper's as a bit of a damage amp, so it's actually not too terrible. Also. Mm. The positioning! Oh, take fucking note. She positioned her Syndra in C1, which is really unusual for usually for you know any sniper emblem holder. But she positions it in C1 for two reasons. First is so that she can get a little bit of extra Aegis value out of the support item, which is her gold augment, but also because of the way that her Orn is positioned. Because Orn will cast, and because the closest unit is gonna end up being Syndra, Syndra ends up getting the item whenever Orn casts, and now we have actually a three item Syndra. So, really, really good use of a unit's abilities just to, you know, maximize the, like, the output of what we can get per fight. So, very solid play. Uh, looks like we are sitting on potential Sunfire slamming. Um, not the biggest fan of Sunfire. But I don't think it's terribly bad either. We are on a 6 win streak. And if it does help preserve our streak, it's great. Especially because we don't have any anti-heal on our board. But it seems like uh, Rain is probably thinking about slamming it if it really is the difference maker. But so far, it looks like we are still cruising. So, 83-4-6. Really solid spot. So, overall, I can really well played game by Rain so far. Just going fast 9 here. And then trying to capitalize throughout different means. But I feel like it was too really solid. And again, a lot of people are running Aphelios 2. And just to give you guys a little bit more, you know, just a couple other ideas as well. Aphelios 2, sometimes Teemo 2 to get to 9 is a very common strat. Um, a little less common. Aphelios 2 is definitely a little more um, solid, but he does require Ginsu's. Uh, but there's also other units as well, such as the Bard 2 to Fast 9, Zoe 2 to Fast 9. A lot of these 2 star 3 costs, you shouldn't be sleeping on them. They're super solid to have on your board. And looking those, for those 4 costs on level 9 odds, it feels so, so much better. So... Oh, especially because the four costs are kind of weak in the meta right now. Um, they're not particularly great, but two star three costs versus two star four cost. Hate to say it, there's like there is a difference, but it's a lot smaller than you'd expect it to be. So that's why I like this play a lot. But anyways, it looks like loot subscription. Oh my god, hitting us with a lot of gold. We're forty nine gold. Uh, we could fast ten in this spot actually, uh, which is super insane. Also, by the way, we're gonna pause here real quick. Just look at the components here. Um, this is a little tough. Uh, I personally, if I'm in this spot, I think I'm actually reforging, um, this, but, 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 ooh, it's hard. I would probably reforge chain and see what happens, but you are trying to look for, like, a Syndra item here. Sorry, excuse me. Ideally. Syndra item, TG, like, that's fine as well for, like, the Lissandra, um, or an item as well is fine. So, maybe you could go Vow and Nashers, it doesn't feel that good. But it, if you're going to slam on this turn, I think that is sort of the way to go. So I would probably reforge chain here, in my opinion. But And then you end up with Warmogs. Uh, but I think that's fine as well. And actually, Warmogs is sounding super solid. Warmogs is just such a great item right now. Um, but nope, she ends up going for the tier. So it looks like she's going for Vow. So you yep, ends up going for the Ornine here. And then Nashers. Nashers is sort of like the thing we want to avoid, though. Because Nashers is... It's a fine item on AP carries. But if you're... If your Syndra's fucking Ginsu's Nashers, that shit is not doing... That is not doing jack squat. So she does something actually kind of interesting here. So she actually opts to not slam items here. And this is so fucking greedy. This is hella greedy. You should not do this. This is not great. This is this fight is a little too close. And quite honestly, do we lose? I think I think we lost. Oh, like we lost, man. Like, this is definitely a Nashers div. Like, you should have slammed the Nashers or at least slammed, like, another item here. But the reason that she didn't is because she wanted to really greed for Lissandra to try to pop us another component. And whatever component that we get dropped might be actually better than whatever, you know, Nashers. Like, it, it, like there's a lot of things that are better than Nashers here. Things like, even Guard Breaker's better. Guard Breaker's better. GS is better. Shiv is debatably okay. Um, We have a lot of options here. So, even Morello's really nice. Uh, 
we have a lot of options. And also, we still have the Reforge that we're sitting on that I still think we should have used, but that is just me. But anyways, going in here, level 9, 58 gold. What a fucking crazy time to be alive. Because she is just fast 10. And this is not something you get to see very often, but again, this is a very high variance portal with loot subscription. And identifying that you can just still use this very solid Aphelios 2 with Syndra with, you know, okay items. Um, it's still a very solid place to be. Like, your board is still solid. It'll still kill a bunch of units. You will probably start losing a lot of fights, but even if you do lose, it's not by a large margin. And as we can see here, looks like we lose again, but it's a three unit. Almost a two unit, actually. So, we're super fucking chilling. Uh, we're already sitting on two Aphelios as well, so maybe we think about holding on to the Aphelios and keeping them for a potential Aphelios 3. Out of any unit in the game that could potentially hold these items, Aphelios 3 is probably one of the best options, um, outside of things like Ash 3 and, like, Aurelia 3. But, like, an Aurelia 2 versus, like, this Aphelios 2, um, obviously Aurelia 2 is significantly better than Aphelios 2, but to pivot into it costs a lot of money and then it's also a very it's very far away right it's not something we want to really think about and Aphelios 3 is probably the more realistic one but again we're kind of waiting for Spencer to die if we were going to roll but we're already level 9 going 10 soon right and our odds for 3 costs are at 25 percent so this Aphelios we gotta admit is probably not happening which kind of sucks but it is what it is like you know there are going to be games where like you're going to be contested and there's nothing you can do about it so if you're going to get contested you gotta think okay if i'm going to get contested what are my other outs and in rain's case in this case is a fast 10. so this is a very very interesting approach uh again a 40 in a loss we are starting to bleed out here we are three losing uh it is five three but everyone is so so strong but we are still chilling with a decent board and by the way open your fucking eyes man that is a sniper's caress on carousel my god Sniper's Crest on Carousel is actually nutty. So, the fact that we're getting a Sniper's Crest on Carousel is so good for us because now this actually opens up the door for six snipers. So, we actually end up snipering our Lissandra of all things. And Sniper Lissandra is interesting, to say the least. Um, there's nobody better who can hold the crest, obviously. But when it comes to Sniper's Crest, there's not that many units you think of when you think of, like, okay, this unit is a great Sniper's Crest holder. So for her, I think she's just like, okay, you know what? Six Sniper is a huge damage spike. So maybe I just play six Sniper, seven Faded, and then we just call it from there. And that's just our board. So again, Rain is playing a very creative, very solid line. So I, I love this a lot. It's just a lot of cooking and adapting on the fly with whatever the game decides to give you. Four loss here, 34. Um, she actually is still sitting, by the way. Uh, working out, I guess, is making you bigger. Scouting around, seeing if there's anything potentially like alarming, but from what I can see, not really. Um, in loot subscriptions specifically, because there's so much gold injections, sometimes you might be wondering to yourself, like, okay, maybe I want to be going for a three-star four cost because of all the gold. So, you know, you gotta be on the lookout for things like that. But it looks like in this case, nobody's really particularly close. So I think we're gonna be okay. Also, very prudent. Belt tier to make a redemption on the Lissandra for our backline. Very good. Um, for those of you who don't know, redemption backline is sort of like this like niche. I, I don't know if I would call it tech per se, but it's it's a niche thing that sometimes people do to try to get some level of healing onto your backline. And when you get, you know, like a sniper's focus Lissandra, who is now a three hex unit and is gonna stay on the C row for basically the entirety of the game, uh for it to be healing up our backline here, it's pretty solid. It's actually a very, very prudent slam here. And I think some people, especially in lower elo, might have just seen the redemption and just slammed it on the Yasuo instead. But maybe lower elo isn't even the spot. But anyways, going on 20 HP now, we are pretty low. We gotta start thinking about ways to spike our board. Tricks is glass because we wanna fortify our frontline, super prudent. We should watch this roll out actually at regular speed. I think that would make the most sense here. But we wanna get this set in here as well. We wanna keep seven faded. Uh, we're gonna drop down to two Arcanists, dropping the Ari. Double set! Ooh, a lot of fucking tank. Um, also, we got the Aphelios 2 as well. So we're, all, we're two Aphelios 3, which is definitely really great as a potential out. Archangels for our Syndra. Sorry for the back. I don't know what the fuck is going on out there. But Arch Archangels for our Syndra. Our boys looking super fucking solid. Uh, there's not much else that really the, like needs to be done here, except for maybe, we, no, we gotta get off this Aphelios eventually. Um, we probably want to drop down. And I actually think in terms of outs, Sniper Zayat with Trick Shot is a potential out. It's really hard to see in a spot like this, though. Um, I know if I'm playing in this spot, I would not be thinking about Sniper Zayat at all. But Sniper Zayat is possible. Sniper's Irelia is possible. These are all things that we can consider from this spot. So I definitely think those are like a couple things that you want to keep in mind when playing around Sniper's Crest. Again, it's a really small and niche 
interesting to be thinking about, especially because not a lot of people like to cap out with Zaya. But um, I still think it's a potential out that we could consider just because if we're not hitting this Aphelios 3, uh, especially on 20% odds, then maybe we try to go for the Zaya 2 out instead with a uh, 2 trick shot. Again, it's not a very common out, but with 6 sniper, like how bad could it possibly be? But anyways, looks like we are unfortunately dead and it is a 4th, which is pretty unfortunate. But I mean, hey, it's a 4th, but if we weren't contested out the Wazoo, I feel like this was a pretty well played game overall. Like overall, this wasn't like your first like, oh, holy tuber, but very solid performance by me. So anyways, I hope you guys learned something. I hope this was useful. Take care, guys. I'll see you guys for another video potentially soon and happy climbing. Take care. Bye-bye now.